we are back with another video. We had a beautiful, warm, windy day with a little bit of overcast. And normally this means one thing to me, that we are gonna be snap jigging, ripping stuff real hard up on a lot of these flats, these weed edges, probably where we're gonna be fishing mostly today, maybe some sand and gravel, um, and snapping them hard and getting bites. This is the kind of day, you know, I talk a lot about kind of using specific presentations. I don't quite talk a lot about when you use each one, right? And this is kind of the day when you get a lot of wind like this, you get some sun, a little bit of overcast, you know, these fish love sun this time of year, um, just because it warms everything up so nice. But if you have a day that looks like this, you could probably see what the sky looks like with a good chop on the water. Generally, they're gonna be eating snap jigs. And we're gonna be fishing a lot of this Kalen's um, quarter ounce Google Eye jig with the Kalen's jerk minnow on there and uh, snapping it real hard and aggressive and hopefully getting some big bites. So we gotta go find some fish quick. We got a beautiful weed edge here and uh, that's the plan, snap jig and walleye. early summer, perfect time to snap jig. So stay tuned, we're gonna find some fish and get it done. All right, so we're cruising around looking for fish right now. Uh, the nice part about having a good chop is I'm not nearly as concerned about spooking fish um, as versus the other day when we filmed a couple videos and it was like literally flat out. So I definitely like using my motor for doing this just because I can do it a lot quicker. And I'm um, kind of staying in like 12, 13 feet of water. And I got some weeds kind of just outside of me and some weeds with an inside weed edge right inside of me. And some days they might be on the inside, some days they might be on the outside. It's just kind of, you got to go out and look. And I'm already seeing a few, but not like what I really, really want to see here. That was a weird sound my phone made. A lot of sand right now. We're not really like in the thick stuff yet. But hopefully soon. Okay, so now we're seeing some fish. All right. So I actually got them off both sides right now. So I'm going to drop a waypoint. I'll go ahead and screenshot this for you guys. There's actually a lot of fish right there, like a lot, a lot of fish. But still going. Most of them are off the left, so take a look. Most of them are off the left, and there's just a pile of them back there. And a lot of times, some of these are definitely gonna be suckers, just judging by the amount of them. And there's a few off the right, but that's a lot of fish off the left. Now I'm gonna go over to my sonar, just so you can see what it would look like, kind of the difference here. So there's a screenshot of sonar and down at me, right? Pretty much impossible to ever see a fish in something like that. Um, you're just never gonna be able to pick them out. I mean, you might be able to see like one sometimes here or there, but you go back to side imaging and take a look at this shot, it's pretty obvious that all these little dots are fish. And those black spots are obviously the shadows, and sometimes you can see um, kind of those, uh, um, you can see the actual white speck, which is the fish, but a lot of times you just get that black shadow, kind of depending on what bottom you're on and how you hit that fish, how your boat's positioned. So now those fish are kind of back behind me, back in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loop back around, spot lock, and start pitching to them. Hooked up on the snap jig. Second cast of the day. Feels like a decent fish. Not super big, but a good starter one. Oh yeah, <laughs> I love doing this. You know, we filmed a bunch of videos in the past couple days where it's been super flat out. And if I can fish walleyes anyway, I'd be doing this right here. Snapping a plastic around way up in the shallows. Awesome fishing. Generally your average size is very good. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this one here. Oh, still fell in the water. There we go. Little Kalen's jerk minnow. Gold quarter ounce Google Eye. Just as much of a staple as a staple can be. And there's a perfect pout. Oh, oh, oh. 19 inch walleye right there. Let's let that guy go. Too awesome. Oh. Say that again. Yep. Okay. Yeah, give me one second, let me call you back. I have a fish on right now. All right, thanks. 
All right, well, sometimes the best way to catch one is to be on the phone. And there we go, there's a nice one. He actually trapped at the bottom. He's got it, whoa, right under his jaw here. Look at that thing. Oh my gosh, he's hooked all bizarre here. We got him on. I swear, sometimes you pick up the phone and it's just like immediate. I knew that was gonna happen. I just spot locked down here. Should have known better. There we go. Beautiful northern Wisconsin walleye there, and he's angry. He's about a, I don't know, 23, 24 incher. We'll give you guys a look. Look at that. Beautiful 23, 24 inch walleye. Snapping that plastic around. Too much fun. You know, you get a little bit of a chop, you get kind of the right conditions, and you don't even want to consider taking the plastic off. It's too fun to fish, number one. Number two, it just gets quality bites. And uh, this is just an absolutely perfect time of year to do it. See you later, buddy. All right, so what we have here is a big pot of fish that do not want to eat the snap jig. And this is kind of the reality of filming videos. You go out to kind of film one thing and it turns into another thing quite often. Tried the hair jig, snapping that around. Tried the jerk minnow. I've obviously already caught a few fish on the jerk minnow. And uh, for some reason, the bite is just slowing. So obviously the next thing we can do is go to something much slower, like a slip bobber, like a jig and live bait. And uh, it's kind of the perfect scenario for the slip bobber. So we're gonna get one out. probably get a few going and uh, see what happens got to be willing to switch it up for walleyes they're one of the most presentation oriented fish there's so many different ways to fish for them and they can be so keyed in on one thing so I'll give the slip bobbers a shot see what happens Gotta be willing to switch it up. You know, we sat there and made several casts at those fish. I should have eaten, I knew I was in. Now we got a nice one on. Yeah. Look at that. Right in the nose. Two minutes of fishing that slip bobber. Let that one go. See you later, buddy. There we go. Bobber going down. Got a whole bunch of slack. Oh, got him. Got to switch. Got to know when to switch. Obviously helps me you know you're in fish is one of the biggest things. And when you can tell you're in them, you know, it really shouldn't take a million casts to get it done. This one's got a big tapeworm coming out of them. I think this is what these things are. A nice eater walleye on the slip bobber i'd much rather be snap jigging them but the reality of fishing is is that we do not make the rules let them go there we go pod close to the boat Kind of reeled that one in a little ways. She is going down. <laughs> that feels like a good one. <laughs> Too much fun, you know, That is absolutely why you use side imaging. You know, I was kind of casting farther out where I originally saw those fish. And uh, basically what happened is I saw a big pod real close to me. Like you can see them right there in the graph off my right. It's a 
pitched real close and look at that immediate reward right there. Beautiful walleye on the slip bobber. And a lot of times what you can do is take the other one and pitch that real close too. But that is exactly, exactly what we are after right there. Come here, buddy. Quality, quality fish here. Slip bobber, little hook, just a finesse octopus hook there. Right in the roof of the mouth. Too much fun, look at that. We're gonna let him go. Catching him good now. See you later, buddy. Well, I'm kind of glad the video is turning out this way because it kind of depicts reality better than probably a lot of fishing shows or videos or even mine do. And that's the fact that you do have to switch baits, right? And there's kind of a natural progression that you go through a lot of times each time you come out. You know, today it looks like a great day to fish very aggressive. And you probably could catch a few fish doing that, right? And uh, maybe it'll turn on later in the day, be a super good snap jig, but you see it go both ways a lot of times, right? Um, but generally, you know, you think of when fish are amped up, when fish are jacked up feeding. You want something that's very visible and excites them, right? You want those fish to be excited when they see something. And a snap jig is just like the perfect thing for that. You can cover a ton of water, you can put it in front of a ton of fish, and you can snap it. Those fish see it from a long way in clear water, they feel it from a long way in dirty water, and and it's a very visual, instinctual thing to, for them to bite, right? It's kind of like musky fishing. Like when musky fishing's really, really on, it's super good. You probably want the bait that's gonna get noticed more than anything else, right? And the snap jig is that of walleye fishing. So um, you can kind of keep that in mind. You know, moving down from kind of like the quickest thing you'd be fishing or the most aggressive thing going slower, you know, kind of the, the next thing you would fish is, uh, you know, generally a live bait thing. You know, that's definitely on the slower end of the spectrum. You could try jigging something like a jig and a minnow, a jig and a leech, right? So a lot of times, if you, because you can still cover a lot of water with that but uh, it is a little bit slower and obviously a little bit more enticing once those fish get right up next to it, right? And kind of on the slowest end of the spectrum, you have something like the slip bobber or like a lindy rig, something like that that's just, it's pretty much reliant on the action of the leech or minnow, you know, that leech is down there just kind of wiggling like that and that minnow's obviously down there kicking. You know, we're slip bobber and leeches today, but you know, this is kind of how it goes, right? There's one presentation like the snap jig, which is in front of that fish for a very short period of time but excites them a lot there's something like a jig and a minnow a jig and a nightcrawler jig and a leech which you still work through that fish it's generally more enticing for a neutral or negative fish um, but you can also cover water with it or something that stays pretty much planted in front of that fish like a slip bobber or a lindy rig so you know this is kind of an attribute aggression you guys can go through if you're seeing tough fishing on one end and there's a lot of days where you know the slip bobber gets some bites but you can catch a lot more snap jigging so kind of keep that in mind too it definitely goes both ways Oh, look at this. It's just going down already. I'm gonna throw this one out, just so it's out. I'm gonna pick this one up and catch a fish. Here we go. One after another right now. Too much fun. Another real nice fish. Just a lot of quality, quality fish today. I'm gonna kind of swing them over here. But really, when the stars do align, I mean, you should kind of expect a fish, you know, as long as you can stay in them. Obviously, there's tough bites and stuff like that where you gotta make repetitive casts and keep a bait in front of them for a long time. But a lot of times, if they are eaten at all, it's just kind of a matter of trying enough stuff. And, you know, this time of year, it's definitely that snap jig's a huge go for me. Slip bobbers and leeches are a huge go for me. There's another kind of trolling thing, which where I'm pulling harnesses with leeches on them, which are kind of the primary three ways to catch a lot of fish this time of year. Man, he ate that thing good. It's not hooked that bad. Just gotta pop it out. I'm scared my other bobber's about to go down. Look at this, one after another. All right, that fish is off. Just a walleye processing plant right now. Another one on, smoking them. This is when it gets fun, when you get this many fish in a real small spot. 
not a big one here but just one after another right now super clear water super bright sunny day look at that just another beautiful dandy northern wisconsin walleye the ones everybody's up here fishing for the fish fry fish Well, that is gonna do it for that quick little video. Um, it was not where I intended the video on going. I thought it was gonna be all a snap jig video with this nice little win, and uh, it just kind of fizzled out on me. But I got out this morning, and boom, boom, it was like fish were just eating that thing. I lost a couple, caught a small one on camera that just, I don't think I'm even gonna put in the video, and broke one off somehow right at the boat. I'm not sure what was going on there, but, and then it just, I would hit a few pods, and I just wasn't getting bit. So, um, always have multiple things in mind when you're going out. You know, there's always a progression that I kind of go through. Uh, I'm sure you can kind of start with the slowest moving thing, um, but a lot of times covering water with the faster moving thing is the deal to start. And definitely it gives you a better idea what's going on across the lakes. But you know, if you are sure you're in fish and you're just not getting bites, um, you know, there's always something else to try. You can slow down, you can speed up. And uh, the important thing is always obviously making sure you're in fish. And you know, that's an important thing too. And I'm about to shoot another video on kind of how these fish set up in weeds, how they relate to weeds, things like that. So stay tuned for that video because um, we get a lot of questions on how to fish relate to weeds, inside edges, outside edges, what do they look like on side imaging, all this kind of stuff. So um, stay tuned for that. Kind of excited to make that video. It should be very beneficial for you guys. But um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and uh, hopefully it was beneficial for you guys. And if you're not yet, please subscribe and stay tuned for more content. Summer's just getting started and we got a pile of content on the way. Thanks for watching.